welcome to the EKG Guy. Many of you have asked about electrical access because this tends to be a common area of trouble when first learning. So let's address this here so that it makes sense, okay? And we're gonna use the example that we've posted over the last week uh, to serve as our illustration. So here you have the EKG that we posted, and essentially we were asking to find the ventricular axis, okay? So the QRS axis, what is the ventricular activity? And this is really helpful as we look at the differential diagnosis and pointing to uh, different causes of maybe underlying structural heart disease. So when we think of electrical axis, you're really looking at the electrical impulse from the sinus node all the way through the ventricle Purkinje fibers, where is the main electrical axis heading towards? In this case, we're looking at the ventricular axis. So we focus on ventricular complexes. So every form, every cardiac complex within the cycle, wave segments, um, all have different uh, electrical axes. So in this case, when we talk about the QRS axis and the one that you'll probably often hear about, that's the one we're looking at. And we're looking at the ventricular complexes. Okay, so one of the first things we have to first uh, settle is what is a positive, what is a negative complex, okay? So in this case, if you use this dotted line as your baseline, okay, these are QRS complexes, so representing QRS representing ventricular depolarization. And those are the complexes you want to focus on, okay? So you can see uh, this one right here uh, is a QRS complex. So imagine this one here. You take the baseline and notice that the majority of this is above it, okay, compared to that below. And so we would call this a positive QRS complex, okay? When you look at the one here, if you take the amplitude, the voltage from top to bottom, envision that these are the same, this is one we would call isoelectric, okay? Meaning above and below the baseline is the same in voltage or amplitude. And if you take this one above the baseline compared to below it, you can see that this component below it is much greater, and so this would be a negative. So that's what you have to know first, okay? So, and the next thing is when we look at these uh, complexes, notice the leads that are placed here. These are all limb leads because we're looking at the axis in the frontal plane, okay? So there's a horizontal plane going this way and then a frontal plane. In most cases, when you're asked about this, it's the frontal plane. Now there is a horizontal plane as well, uh, but we won't get into that here because this is the one you'll commonly come across. So when we look here, essentially you're looking at the leads, the limb leads here, and the ones you wanna be aware of are the three circled here. So lead one, lead two, and AVF, okay? So if you have those three in mind, those are the ones that'll essentially get you there. The other ones can help direct you closer to more of an exact axis, but if you just take those three away, that'll be sufficient. And as we go through this, we'll start filling out the table, okay? So I'll let you guys go ahead and uh, try this example, all right, and see what you get. Essentially, you're looking for one of these choices here, normal, normal variant, left axis deviation, right axis deviation, right superior axis, or an indeterminate axis. So take a minute and go through that right now. And in the meantime, what I wanted to do is let many of you know that there's thousands that have ordered one of our free books that we're giving out. This is our EKG Foundation Secrets. This lesson, corresponding videos are also available. You can get this book for free. Every year we try to give back to the medical community. This year it's uh, our Foundation Secrets book, which will take you kind of serve the foundation that you need to really master more complex topics, okay? get rid of all the memorization and start learning the concepts so they make sense. So go ahead and grab this. I'll leave the link uh, so that you can get your free copy of that. All right, so looking at this one here, what we wanna do is first draw out this uh, cross looking thing, okay? And this is our quadrant system. This is an easiest way to learn it as you're beginning. So if we do this, we also then want to add our uh, leads, okay? The leads particularly that we're focused on. So this is where lead one sits, okay? Lead one, this is the positive end of it, sits at zero degrees, okay? So when we look at the degrees, that would be zero. This is what we consider positive 90 degrees, okay? This is negative 90 degrees, essentially going in the opposite direction, and this we consider plus or minus 180 degrees, okay? So just know that kind of quadrant, the degrees, 
and where the lead sit. So lead one is at zero degrees. Down here, we have AVF. So AVF, this is the positive end of AVF sits there, okay? And then we also mentioned another lead that we circled, and that was lead two. So lead two sits right here, okay? So this is positive 60 degrees, lead to, again, the positive end of those leads. So if you have an impulse that is positive uh, in that lead, that would mean that it would be going towards that lead. So if you imagine this is lead one, say this is lead one, okay? And this is the complex that we have in it. We said this one is positive, so it'd be heading towards that positive end. So if we look here, let's just go through our example. So here's lead one, okay? And if you look at this complex here, notice the QRS complex is mostly below the baseline. So this is a negative uh, one, okay? So we would say that the electrical impulse from that ventricular activity that that lead is seeing is going away from lead one. So if this is the positive end of lead one, it would mean that it is going away from this lead, okay? So in this direction. So imagine you have the impulse going in this direction, okay? And then if we look at another lead, let's look at AVF here. So AVF, you have this QRS complex. Notice that this above the baseline is greater than below, okay? And same with that complex here. Then you want to call this a positive above the baseline. So here's lead AVF. We said if it's a positive impulse, it'll come towards this direction. If it was negative, it'd go in that one. But this one we said is positive, so it will come in this direction, okay? So, so far, just based on those two leads, our axis sits in this region. And we would already have our answer, okay? What's nice is we already know that the axis lies in this area, okay? Now, one thing I want to go back and kind of inform you about is that there's different segments. So this is a quadrant way, okay? And normal axis lies in this quadrant, all right? If you have a left axis shift, left axis deviation, it would sit in this one, okay? This is what we call a right axis shift, and based on what we just saw, it seems like we would fit in that category based on this EKG without even having to take lead two into account. Now, if you look here, this is what we call a right superior axis, or northwest, so this is north, this is west, so it's in this region, northwest axis, you may hear it of it, or no man's land. Very rarely do you have rhythms that end up there, okay? One instance is ventricular tachycardia, okay? You may have a rightward superior shift as the, you have maybe a retrograde activation, or you have a low, maybe an apical, uh, ectopic focus that's heading in that direction. So VT, ventricular tachycardia, may have an axis in that right superior uh, axis range. So based on what we did, we looked at only leads one and AVF, and those are the leads I would recommend starting with, and we put us in this category, okay? Now, if you look here, we have normal, a normal variant. So what is a normal variant? Well, generally, Again, going in the opposite direction, this is negative 30 degrees. So this region here, okay, is considered still that normal variant range. So from zero to negative 30 is a normal variant range. And so if it, maybe you have an older patient with an axis in that range, it still may be normal, okay? Remember, as we get older from childhood or even in uh, adolescence and young children, as they're born, they have a right axis shift and slowly it begins to shift more leftward. Now, that may be because of maybe systemic hypertension, you know, aortic stenosis, left ventricular hypertrophy, things that are shifting it there as we age. So as you go this way, right, in a young, maybe two-year-old, you don't want to see a left axis shift, but in adults, that region here is okay, okay? And we're not going to get to it uh, so much here, but that is where we get this lead that becomes the most helpful. And maybe we'll do an example to help you uh, understand what that is, but let's go to our chart here and fill this out for you. So normal axis. So if we look at a normal axis, we said this was the normal axis. So just to clarify, the answer to uh, this one here was right axis deviation, okay? Hopefully you got that correct. All right, because it sat in this region here. We had a negative uh, complex in one and a positive AVF, and that was sufficient, okay?
Now, moving on to our chart here, our table, let's fill it out. So normal axis, we said normal would be in this range. That would mean we'd want a positive in one, okay? A positive in two, and if we were, or an ABF, and if we're looking at lead two, it also want to be positive going in this direction, okay? So essentially you need uh, one AVF and as well as two. Now essentially, if you looked at leads one and two and they were positive, that would be a normal axis by itself. You wouldn't need AVF. When looking at a normal variant, this is where lead two becomes important. So again, normal variant is in this range. So we'll call this NV, how about normal variant. And in that case, you're going to have a positive in one, okay? You'll have a positive in ABF, and you'll have a negative uh, in lead two, okay? And uh, hopefully that makes sense. Or excuse me, I'm sorry, this is positive and this should be negative. And so why is that the case? So if you have a positive in one, imagine that you're going in this direction, okay? If you have a negative in AVF, imagine you're going in this direction, okay? And the one that's perpendicular and that runs across this is lead two. And if lead two is positive, you'd be heading in this direction and fall in that normal variant range, okay? So hopefully that makes sense there. So back to this. So left axis deviation, well, that means we want to end up here. Well, we were going to want one that's positive in here, okay? We're going to want AVF that's negative, okay? Going in that direction. And we're also going to want lead two to uh, wind up on this end, meaning going away from this positive lead. So this should be negative as well. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. And then we have right axis deviation, the one we, we saw here. In this case, we want one to be negative. We want AVF to be positive. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense there. Now what we have a few more left, we have this right superior axis. So we said that would be up here. So envision what would you expect here. So if you had you wanted it to end up there, you'd want this to go away from one, all right? So it'd be negative in one. We'd want it to go negative in AVF, okay? And if you wanted to look at lead two, you'd probably want it not going in this direction towards positive uh, 60 degrees, but in the opposite direction, so that may also be negative, okay? So hopefully that makes sense there. Now, in terms of indeterminate, this is where we cannot define the ventricular axis. And so what cases would that be? Well, that would be essentially if you had these isoelectric complexes in uh, essentially the leads we discussed, okay? One, two, and AVF, where they were isoelectric throughout, we would call this indeterminate, and you would essentially, so you have isoelectric, okay, or biphasic up, meaning iso, they're equal phasic above and below the baseline in all those leads, that would be indeterminate because we didn't have a main uh, electrical impulse that was defining the ventricular activity. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. So just to recap, again, the main thing you want to be able to do is no positive above or below the baseline, isoelectric, e equiphasic or biphasic complexes above and below, and then this would be negative because most of it's below the baseline. So make sure you know that comp or concept, and then go to your charts, okay, where you're drawing out these, okay? Look at lead one, look at lead AVF. Remember, these are the positive ends of those leads, okay? And as we saw in this example, lead one was negative, okay? We said negative, so it went away. And then we said lead AVF here was positive. So it was going toward the positive lead, okay? And it put us in this region here. And we said that that region here is a right axis shift, right axis deviation, and that was the answer to this. We then completed the chart based on essentially this, okay? So as long as you know this chart or this, uh, this diagram, you can do it. And when you're learning and starting off, try to draw it out for the first time, and eventually it'll just become routine and second nature, okay? So again, normal axis would be here, left axis deviation would be here, this would be that right superior axis, okay? If you draw this, this is that normal variant in our adults, and then just to draw the degrees, because you want to make sure, zero degrees going in this direction, you'd have the positive 90, 
this is plus or minus 180 degrees, and this is negative 90 degrees. So if you use this quadrant system, it'll be very helpful. Uh, it'll get you the answer that you need. And usually for testing purposes, if that's what you're using this for, it'll be more than enough. Well, that's all I got. Again, I would refer to you if you want this free copy. I know thousands of you have already pre-ordered, um, and we have thousands more going out this week. Uh, feel free to catch the, the free copy before uh, we run out, okay? We can only do this opportunity for so long, so feel free to grab that while you last. Again, you'll get all of this outlined in that book as well, as, long, as well as many other topics. So please let me know if you have any questions, if this made sense. Appreciate your support. That's the end of this lecture. I hope you learned something. Thank you.